and welcome to Night Hunter Books for our February wrap up. As with recent trends, I did not read very many books this month, but you did. So this month I'm starting with Ellie Modisett Jr.'s The Eternity Artifact, which I picked up because I'd read and enjoyed a lot of his science fiction work. Um, it turns out I read a lot of his science fiction work quite a long time ago. Ragtag band sent to explore the only alien artefact humans have ever found. It almost feels like he's been told you need to work on distinguishing your characters more, you know, make sure they're more separable. The point of view characters are all all have their own vocal tics almost in how they come across. One of them being verbose to the point of ridiculousness and um that's saying something for you. <laughs> yes. It's just irritating to read. So, might not be picking up too many more. This is Mass Effect Revelation by Drew Carpishan. The Titan elements worked really well for me. It was, you know, I was hearing the voices from the game. However, that was the best bit about the book, was the universe it was set in. It was an enjoyable read, but... Um, I'm not sure I'd recommend it to anybody other than die-hard Mass Effect fans. My first one for this month is Summer Morning, Summer Night by Ray Bradbury, which I was recommended a while ago by someone. I'm so um, sorry! <laughs> I rated it two stars, maybe two and a half. I found most of the stories were just a bit meh but some of them did actually make me angry. Every story in this centres around Ray Bradbury's Greentown, Illinois, which I think he set other books in, which to be fair I haven't read. So. But just generally I found all of the stories set in a world that I wasn't particularly interested in. It's kind of small town, America, not a very diverse set mm. of characters, just kind of slice of life stories where I wasn't really sure what the point was. I wasn't sure why I was interested in these people going about their kind of ordinary lives. And the stories that annoyed me were mainly from male perspectives with a very kind of male gaze view of the female characters. I think I'd recommended this to you saying um, it made me feel nostalgia for a time I never knew. I think I've got generally a bit more interest slash affection for general sort of small town Americana. Yeah. That said, I haven't read it for a couple of years, so it'd be interesting to see if I'd have the same view of it now. And all these stories are written in the 50s, I think, most of them. The next one is Europe in Autumn by Dave Hutchinson, after seeing Books and Pieces talk about it. And this is interesting. It starts out as a three and a half star techno thriller as you follow this bumbling everyman become an experienced courier um, across the fractured web of modern Europe, or near modern Europe, um, as uh, city-states start demanding visas and forms in triplicate. Then it flips to a different subgenre, which I'm not going to mention because it's a spoiler. Very clearly a setup for something else, but so far I'm not quite convinced about how the something else is going to be handled. The only other book I read this month was The Dark Forest by Sishin Lu, which is the second uh, in a series after the Three Body Problem, but unfortunately this one disappointed me. It drops most of the characters who we followed in the first book, a lot of whom I found really interesting, uh, and gives you this entirely new set of male characters. And when this book was in its flow, then it was still really good. I really enjoyed uh, the ideas and the world building and essentially the strategies um, that we learn about. But during the bits where the plot got a bit slower, then I didn't find the characters interesting enough to make me want to keep picking it back up again. I will, I think, pick up the third one. But if it were going to be a few years before it came out, I'm not sure I'd wait. I'm not sure it would keep my interest up. But right now I'm still intrigued to see where the plot goes with this and hope that we get a different set of characters again for the third one. Or it's more similar to the first book in the series. 
My next one is The Stars of Legion by Cameron Hurley, which I think we hauled relatively recently. Yeah, you have no restraint. <laughs> no. I have no desire to restrain myself. That's, that's the uh, key problem true. there. This is set in a cluster of um, biological design world ships. And these systems are slowly dying and decaying over time. So the world is unrelentingly grim. It's just disturbing. It's very biological. It's incredibly inventive and slightly disturbing. Um, it's only populated by women in this future and the women give birth um, at the whim of the world that they're on um, to what the world needs. So, so maybe content warning for... Uh... Yes, issues relating to uh, pregnancy and birth. I think fundamentally it's a hopeful book. <laughs> I mean, they, don't get me wrong, these characters, whilst they're being horrible to each other, are crawling over the bodies of their fallen enemies, but they're, they're, they're crawling upwards towards the light as they add more bodies to the pile. Um, Upward trajectory. Yes. I'm glad I've read it. I'm not sure I enjoyed it. But it's a good book? Yes. And then the other two things that I read this month, which you also read this month, are Paper Girls Volumes 1 and 2 by Vaughan, Chang, Wilson and Fletcher. And I thought these were pretty fantastic. They follow a group of paper girls in the 80s as on their rounds then they discover that the world has gone a bit weird and then they explore that weirdness and kind of get in trouble and out of trouble. The weirdness, I'd say, is definitely kind of sci-fi inspired, but I won't say more than that. And these were generally just very fast paced, it all happens, even both volumes, I'd say, still just within a few hours really, or within a day, which worked really well. And I really like the art style as well. Um, it's quite distinctive, and as you'll see, quite colourful, um, but more in terms of the backgrounds rather than actually what's going on at the front. It's got quite an atmospheric colour scheme. So yes, would thoroughly recommend and also I will definitely be looking out for the next ones in the series. Next one is Descender Volume 1 by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nagoyan. So it's a science fiction piece set in a very very far future with um, uh, nine or so planets in a galactic federation, um, all of whom are currently recovering from the appearance of giant moon-sized robots that devastated their populations. And um, they, the inhabitants of these various planets subsequently decided they weren't very fond of robots and decided to destroy them all. With the exception of this little boy here, Tim21, a companion bot, um, who is deeply trusting of everybody he meets, even if they're heavily armed and running towards him. Um, this goes about as well as you might expect. It's just a really interesting look at personhood. Uh, I think within one volume it's already indicated to me it's going to be a more fun way to explore that than Alex and Ada. The artwork is lovely, it's a very sort of uh, watercolour type uh, look. My last one is uh, Dusk or Dark or Dawn or Day by Sean Maguire, which I wasn't at all reading off the spine, um, and this is a lovely novella. It features some fantastic world building, a completely new to me at least um, mythology of how what ghosts are and what they're here to do um, which I th found really intriguing um, and it was an interesting mix of some of the stuff that Seanan's done elsewhere, Americana and sort of the myth and folklore of small town America and also some urban fantasy elements. This might even be my favourite of her works along with um, In Every Heart of Doorway. In Every Heart of Doorway. Thank you. And that is all we read for February. Uh, we should be coming soon with a haul as well because 
we probably bought more books than we've read in the month, or at least I did. Let us know what you've been reading this month. Or I'd love to hear if you've read any of the ones that we read, especially the ones that we didn't get along with as well. Are we being unfairly mean to Bradbury and Modisid? And with their giant bank accounts, do they care? <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you again soon.